listen to me, you hillbilly punk who thinks the world's still round. I'm here to tell you it's not. It's flat. <laughs> Interesting guy, man, and uh, you know he believes it. So, Kyrie, the Earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So whatever. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> you must unite what is been set aside. We are TFR Truth Frequency Radio. Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship currently anchored over Raleigh, North Carolina, eagerly awaiting the 2017 International Flat Earth Conference coming this fall. And the peanut gallery, who just chimed in, is in a spaceship hovering over Neil deGrasse Tyson, listening to his BS. (laughs) Nice last minute thing there, peanut gallery. That's awesome. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host. Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which proposed that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, uh, that's because you're scrambling for the $50,000 supposedly somebody offered the Indonesian Flat Earth Society to broadcast astronaut movie propaganda, and they turned it down. Interesting, yeah? For those of you listening to this on YouTube, you want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, the show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. If it is not August 1st, 2017, uh, it's a rerun. So if you call the call-in line, which we're probably not going to do tonight, maybe we'll see. I highly doubt it. But if you try to call that line, you're just going to go to voicemail. So keep that in mind. Quote of the day from the peanut gallery, which is directed at our guest, which we will get to shortly. And we do have a special guest tonight, which is why it's not a call-in show. The quote is, life is like a 10-speed bicycle. Most of us have gears we never use. <laughs> I like the fact, and who wrote that? Charles Schultz. Is that is that Charles Schultz, the creator of, of Peanuts, Charlie Brown, Snoopy? That Charles Schultz? Really? Peanut Gallery should clear that up for me. Uh, Quick announcements before we get into this. The Flat Earth Conference in Raleigh, North Carolina, the rumor is new tickets will be opening up. Get on that waiting list. Sign up for live streaming. And if you're looking for press passes, lie, cheat, and steal because the main hotel is now booked. And as far as press passes go, you're not going to get four tickets for a press pass. I don't care who you are. CNN, uh, Anderson Cooper could call me up right now. And as for four, four press passes, and he's probably not going to get it, unfortunately. What else we got going? Uh, subject, subject matter experts still in effect. Anybody that wants to go out against their respective industry or whether you're retired or just on pension or whatever it is, let me know. You can email me at msargent23 at comcast.net. The Jeffrey Grupp debate challenge is still in effect. Anyone wants to go up against a heavy ap- academic, you got a master's degree in some sort of physical science or higher, bring it on. We got somebody to line up, and he's just gathering dust over in the corner. He used to be angry. Now he's just tired. The big money challenge also still in effect. If you think you can prove the globe, there's at least $25,000 in it for you. Interested? 
Contact Kathy Dunson. Her email address is perilandra, P-E-R-E-L-A-N-D-R-A, 77 at gmail.com. Three more quick announcements. DITRH is doing a billboard that's going up near the conference center. Go fund me a stranger's guide to FE billboard. It's going to be up September, October, and November. It's going to be a printed billboard. We can send people to stand under it with FE signs when we are there. This weekend, I am going to be attending. I'm not presenting. I'm only going to be attending the Global versus Flat Earth.com Summer 2017 Conference in Atlanta, Georgia. This event will be held this weekend, August 5th and 6th. Total conference price is $25. The debaters, there's actually going to be a Flat Earth debate there. It's going to be between Truth Frequency Zone, Zen Garcia, and Dr. Stephen Pigeon. No bird jokes, please. It's going to be at the Holiday Inn Gwinnett Center in Atlanta. So go to, if you're interested in this, go to globalversusflatearth.com. I'm sorry, two more, two more. Uh, There's also going to be another one, takeontheworld17.com. Rob Skiba is going to be there. Amber Plaster is going to be there. She may be singing, actually. September 15th through 17th. I do not know if it's sold out or anything like that. Uh, It's going to be in Cleveland, Ohio. If you're interested, go to takeontheworld17.com or contact Chris Bailey. His phone number is 440-668-668. 6373. And last but not least, and we may talk about this as we go along tonight, the eclipse that's going to be happening across the United States uh, towards the end of this month, August 21st, early in the morning. I am going to be with a documentary film team somewhere near Salem, Oregon, or Eugene, Oregon, or Portland, Oregon, on that morning. So we're going to be doing that whole thing. So if anyone wants to meet up down there, we're, we're, it's loose right now. I mean, I just found it about this afternoon that I'm going to be doing this. And I know you, look, there's no hotels down there. So whatever you do, you're gonna, you cannot stay anywhere near I-5. Even the mid-range hotels down there are going for like $500. And people are sleeping on the front porches of bars. And so I, it's bad. It's really bad. But that's because the media, the, the reason why everything's sold out there is because the media wants to get their first crack at it. You know, it's West Coast. So they don't want to wait till this thing goes all the way down to Charleston, South Carolina. They're going to hit first Oregon. That's where it's going to be total coverage. Anyway, that's it. That's all the announcements I have. And I'm sorry it took so long. My guest tonight, and I believe it or not, I, I do not, unfortunately, because I am not an extreme sports guy in any capacity, I, because I'd be terrified of breaking just about every bone in my body, and I'm sure this guest will tell us stories about that. Uh, but there was, uh, we, we had similar people that were listening to us and listening to what you do, and uh, anyway, his name is Zach Yankush, that's Z-A-C-K-Y-A-N-K-U-S-H. He is a, if I'm not mistaken, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, and don't forget to take off your mute. It, you are a BMX fiend, and I'm actually looking up you you and IMDb. You actually did three different documentaries that are listed, listed in IMDb under that. Strangers in Danger, Bikes Over Baghdad, and Push It to Eleven, The Bits of Bako. Nice. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> How are you, man? I'm awesome. I'm awesome. How are you? Thanks for having me, man. I'm very... It is a pleasure. Uh, it, you know, we, we talked briefly, it was the last week, uh, about, not, about getting you on. And um, I, I was kind of interested because you, you've you been out there, you've, you've done the, you, you've kind of taken a different path than most people, but yeah. an envi- enviable path. There's kids everywhere and be like, oh, wow, I wish I could have done what he did. So kind of break it down. And I, I don't, unfortunately, I do not have written questions for you because we're just going to, we're going to freestyle this. Okay, freestyle, I love freestyle. Yeah, which is. How did you get, not, we'll get into the flatter thing in a bit, but kind of tell me what, after you left high school, what, or while you were in school, what got you into extreme BMX and is BMX all you do? Or are you also a skateboard fiend? Or are you a, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I'm just strictly BMX. I've, I've ridden BMX my whole life. Um, I, um, I started riding in, there was a movie back in the eighties called Rad. It came out in 1986. Lori Lofton was in it. And uh, my mom took me to the movie theater and I saw that. And that was the first time I knew that you could do tricks on, on BMX bikes. Because at the time, you know, you're, you're 9, 10, 11 years old. Uh, every kid had a BMX bike. Sure. But I didn't, know, I didn't know you could do tricks on them until I remember seeing a magazine in a, in a, in a store. And uh, I, I bought the magazine. And I'm like, holy cow. And then when I saw it, when I went to go see Rad, that was the first time that I actually saw in motion BMX. And I was, I was absolutely hooked. I was like, uh, I would if 
I was diagnosed. If, if we would have had it back then, I would have been diagnosed with ADD, ADHD, <laughs> and that, that probably carried on through the rest of my life. But it was uh, when I when I found BMX, and it was it wasn't like it was today. It was we were the outcasts. You know, it was uh, uh-huh. you know back in the in the late eighties, early nineties. You know, you would be really hard pressed to see you know somebody on a, on your football high school football team wearing a skate shirt or a BMX shirt. Right. And uh, and we've come so far in that, but uh, I I fell in love with it, and it was uh, it was weird because uh, there was nobody really around my area. There, my my little brother rode, and then we linked up with a couple kids in the in the area, and we just like built ramps in the backyard. My parents were super supportive, and uh, we started entering contests. And I was by no means ever like one of those people that were like, oh, he's going to be a, a pro BMX rider. Never, <laughs> never in a million years that I think that. Um, because I'm, I'm an average rider, you know, I'm not anything like extraordinary. Okay. Um, but, uh, I got into it and, um, my, uh, when I went to, when I got in high school, again, I was the outcast, uh, my freshman year, I started wrestling. I got into wrestling for some reason. My friend was like, Hey, you should try our wrestling. Got into it. I just love, it was a way to get aggression out and the parallels between BMX and wrestling were so similar in that, like if I lost a wrestling match, I didn't have anybody to blame but myself. And, sure. BM, and BMX is the same way. Like if you want to, nobody's going to teach me how to do this trick, you know, and there's weird life lessons that I learned from riding early on. And I knew, you know, probably a year into BMX that I was going to be this, I was going to do this for the rest of my life, whether I had to become an accountant or paint walls. This was like my outlet. This was my passion. Mm-hmm. And, uh, graduated high school, got a grant for wrestling to go to college, go to college, did the whole college thing, fraternity, Still rode the whole time, like in the winter time. I'm like riding on the dance in the in the dance floor, the the fraternity house. Everybody's like, <laughs> and, and there's this weird theme to my life where everybody's like, when are you gonna stop doing that? Because it, this was pre X Games. Oh so, yeah. So back then it was just like, what what are you doing? Like you're 19 years old. What are you doing riding this bike? And um, graduated college. The I graduated with a double major in communications and business. When I like my last two years of college, I really focused on like broadcasting and what really wanted to get into radio. Mm-hmm. Did, my, did internships at uh, a couple of radio stations, and then when I got out and I saw what uh, radio stations paid, I was like, "F this!" Like I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm, I want to make money. Like my friends, like we all graduated together, and we're like, "Let's go make money." So we, uh, I started working for this transportation company, and then uh, from that, that led to me getting a job working for Ford, and I was living in Ohio at the time. And again, that same theme where like I'm, I'm uh, in charge of like 40 employees at Ford, and I go into work with khakis and a polo on, and then when I leave work, I change like Superman, and I change into my ripped jeans and my t-shirt and go to the skate park. And it was, was when, when are you going to stop doing this? They're like, hey, it works over. Let's go to the bar. And I'm like, I'm going to go to the skate park and hang out with my friends. And even then, like at that point, it was like, uh, I, I, I still love riding. I've got a good job. I've got a house. Like, I'm going to do this. Yeah. And then um, uh, I took another job in, uh, in the south of Ohio. And the night that I went to take my, get my inter- have my interview with this new job, uh, I met the owner of DK Bicycle Company. And he was doing some shows and he's like, Hey, you want to come out and ride in the show? So I did some shows and he's like, Hey, if you want, you know, we'll sponsor you. And I, I was like, well, I have a real job. And he wasn't like a sponsor me in terms of, Hey, I'm going to pay you X amount of dollars a year. He's like, we'll give you a frame and you know, we'll give you t-shirts and stuff and you can sure, say, yeah. you're up with DK. And you know, I'm at 24, 25 at the time. So I'm like, Holy shit. Like this is my dream. You know, like every kid that like wants to get sponsored, like that's that moment where you're like, yes. And I'm like, it came so later in life. So I kept my real job, and uh, I would do shows for DK on the weekends. Yeah. And uh, my at the same time, my friends and I started a skate park in uh, Youngstown, Ohio. So I started announcing some of the contests because I've always been a loud mouth. My parents had me involved in theater at a real at a real early age, mm-hmm. and um, so uh, I started announcing contests. So I would do like a bunch of local contests. So then uh, I get hired. I'm I'm making probably geez, I was probably making like 80 G's a year at this uh, at this. Um, uh, supplier for Ford Motor Company, nice. uh, working my ass off. Uh, but every moment that I would, every free moment I would try and ride. Yeah. So the owner of DK asked for a meeting and he was like, Hey, uh, we, we need a team manager. Um, we would love to have you as the team manager. What are you making now? And I was like 82 or whatever it was. He's like, well, we can pay you, um, 17,000 a year. <laughs> uh, and you took it, it, didn't you? But, but the kicker is, he said, you can, uh, and, and if you take the job, you have uh, three weeks to uh, figure everything out, and then you're going on tour for the next seven months. 
and it was like, what do I do? And, and shout out to, to Jen McLaren, my girlfriend at the time, her dad had just passed away and I was, I wasn't going to do it. I was like, there's no way she just, she had just moved to Ohio and I was like, I'm not going to do it. And she's like, you have to do this. I'll break up with you if you don't. And I ended up doing it. And, um, that I start, I started tour. And then that year, that same year, my, uh, my good friend, Nate Wessel, who's from Ohio, he builds, uh, he's, uh, the best, uh, ramp builder in the world. He's done X games. Every, every, if you've ever seen ramps on television, he's, he's b- b- probably built them. Nice. And he calls me one day and he's like, Hey, uh, there's this contest that, uh, out in California, my friend Molly is going to, uh, put your name in. Can I give you your number? And I was like, yeah. So the next day I get a phone call from Molly and Molly says, hi, is this catfish? And I was like, yeah. She says, Hey, Nate gave me your number. Uh, I'm with the X games. We want to hire you to announce. <sighs> <laughs> and this all happened really, really quick. It happened real fast. And then from that moment on, when that happened, it was just like uh, contests from all over the world were, were hitting me up saying like, hey, we want we want to fly you here. We want to fly you here. And yeah. BMX is so small. And I, I just started traveling. There was like one contest that were like, I would just say, hey, I'll announce your contest for free. I'll sleep on my friend's floor. If you just pay my flight over sure. I've never been to your country, I want to do it. So you so, were promoting the promoting the thing that you love the most, and you were helping build it. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, it, and that's the cool thing about being an announcer, and then in, in the position that I'm in now is where, like, you know, I remember being in high school, and you see these that we we had this uh, this woman came in, they called us out of class. Everybody goes to the gymnasium, and this woman says, "How many volleyballs do you think you you can juggle? Five, six, seven? 14 and everybody's like no 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 and she proceeds to tell us that whatever you put your mind to you can do uh anything is possible a- the impossible is possible and i remember being a sophomore in high school listening to this one i think why why am i listening to this this, this, this is not resonating with me at all like what the hell and then right. you know, at, at the end of her spiel she she takes 14 damn volleyballs and juggles them mother efforts holy smokes Right. And now it's, it's like I, looking back on it, it's like, man, she was absolutely right. And now I'm in the position where it's like, even though I'm a BMX rider and, and technically I'm not a professional. Well, I technically I am because I've gotten paid to ride, but I'm sure. not a competing professional. I'm an announcer. And it's yeah. awesome now because I'm able to show kids like, yo, I love this. Like I, I knew when I was your age at 11 years old, I love this. And if you follow your passion, it'll only lead you in the right direction. And I'm living the same life that all these dudes are doing, and I'm just a damn announcer. And like in any industry, it's like in our industry, if you want to be a photographer or a a mechanic or a team manager or, you know, there's so many facets of all industries that, and I think like, again, that we're probably going to get into this is uh-huh. that the, the powers that be that they can constrict, constrict, constrict it so much where kids look at this and say, wow, living your dream is, is unattainable. You know, I, I yeah. want to be a professional football player. I can't do that. Or I want to be, I love horses. I can't, I can't be a jockey, but it's like, if you love that, like work in a stable, be an intern at, at a, right. at a, at a horse training place, something along those lines, you know? And it's like, uh, I've been really fortunate in that, like my passion has led me in this direction. And, uh, and now here in 2017, I'm still traveling the world. I'm a, I'm a freelance, uh, freelance announcer. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I've done pretty much every, uh, every major BMX contest. I, uh, fantastic Uh, really really fortunate and and the best part about it is it's like when when i go to work i'm truly showing my passion you know you can tell that i love it and my whole goal is just i want to stoke every possible kid that i can on bmx if the kids out there that are listening to this if you can experience five percent of what i've done like follow your heart because it only leads you in the right direction Absolutely. You know, there's a there's a wonderful quote and I wish more people would would follow it. But you know what I'm probably going to say here. And that is uh, and I can't remember who coined it, which was if you find a job that you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Exactly. And that is so, so true. I mean, I had the rare I had the rare chance, not to the extent that you did, not even really even close. But when I got a chance to play video games for a living for, you know, for a few years, you know, for this corporation, they, they literally called me up and said, hey, would you we'd like to sponsor you and we'd like you to be our ringer and go around to the conventions and make these games look better than they actually are. And I said, wow, that's fantastic. It's, I absolutely dropped everything and moved to Colorado during a snowstorm. And, uh, and they were not paying much money back then, even though it was the mid nineties. 
and you know worked my worked my way up and when they folded it was like yeah but i but the question the follow up question for you and we still got time before the first break is if you had to go back and do it do it over again would you have still made that decision yeah 100% yeah yeah i thought you would and i'm sure did you have friends when you left the whole car company management thing did you have friends that said, dude, what are you doing? I mean, I, I know you had the girlfriend at the time that says you are absolutely going to follow this. And girlfriends, women, female intuition, of course she knew. But did you have people on the other side that said, dude, you are insane if you do this? No, I think mo- most of my friends that have known me, they know like how I, how I am. And I think the only pe- the, my only friend that was bummed was my boss at the, that we had worked together. And we, we, we like, kind of went as a team. When we graduated, we were like, all right. BMX isn't working for him. He was trying music. Music isn't working for him. Let's make this money. So that, like right. we that and and that was our, our objective. And then um and then all this came along. So he was pretty much the only one. Everybody else kind of like saw the writing on the wall. They knew that this was the the direction that I should be going in. Well, yeah. I mean, if if it filled every part of your life, the the part where you were saying that you were writing in the inside the fraternity because I was actually at a fraternity for one year. Uh, until I realized, probably not the best thing for me when right. I, uh, drinking. You you can drink yourself to death if you're in a fraternity. Uh, I'm, I'm not picking on people. I'm just saying it is so easy. I mean, they 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 give you anything you want, but yeah. you you have those wide open wooden floors usually, unless it's marble. And uh, it, yeah, you riding around anytime you saw an open floor, you probably took the bike because BMX is so it's such a small it's such a small bike that it uh, you can and so maneuverable you can use it anywhere. Oh, for sure. Yeah, we we actually pack a when I travel, I put the bike in a golf bag. Oh wow, that's amazing. So, I'll, before we go to break, uh, let me ask you real quick because I know that I, my exposure to BMX was different. Of course, you know I'm I'm older, sort of like you, and so I remember you know kind of how it evolved, and I I knew eventually it was going to turn into an X Games thing, like a lot of a lot of things. But did you happen to see, I mean, is it, did it kind of cross over into the music industry after a while? I saw a lot of, well, quite a number of rap videos that used BMX bikes. In, yeah, in, it's, it, well, well it, that, I mean, it's a really interesting, inter- interesting question because um, the, the, the skateboarding thing, um, when you talk about parallels between skateboarding and BMX to the general public, they think, oh, mm-hmm. well, they're pretty much the same thing outside of, you know, BMX bikes a little bit more expensive. But right. the, the main difference in between BMX and skateboarding is that skateboarding has been accepted by mainstream culture. And uh-huh. you, you, uh, there's all these different skateboard brands that where rappers are wearing their clothes and, um, and, and people have bought into it. Whereas BMX is still underground, whereas if, if I walk down the street with a, with a BMX shirt on or a BMX specific brand, most people would have no idea who it is. And until really? BMX makes that jump, that's when it's going to uh, to really really pop off. A lot of people have been trying. There's a lot of guys in BMX that are really trying to push it and uh, and and show the the BMX side of uh, the culture side of of BMX. A lot of us don't even refer to it as a sport. It's it's really a culture. It's a lifestyle. Sure, sure. It is. Um, and of course, the tougher thing. Do you find it tougher to land corporate sponsors with BMX than uh, the, you see other groups getting people? The, the big corporate names rather than you guys? Well, yeah, BMX, BMX is always at the bottom of the totem pole. When, when the X Games <laughs> first went, when, when it first burst on the scene in the, in right. the mid 90s, um, you know, Mark Sargent could win the X Games and, and kids are going to be buying Mark Sargent bikes. Uh, right. now, now that's not the case at all. You've got X Games gold medalists and nobody, nobody buys their bikes. It's all about marketing and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a really different animal when it comes to sponsorships in, um, in BMX and skateboarding. It's, um, you know, so like, and it also depends on what what the sponsor is looking for. It's it's not uncommon for sponsors to do a month long sponsorship just for X Games. They'll sponsor you, you know, give you X amount of dollars just to wear their T shirt at X Games, and that's it. Oh, I got you. So they then now they can limit the contracts to such a, a small, a, such a granular level that the money's just the the big money's not there anymore. It's not like yeah. it used to be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's not like right. like monster drinks come. Oh yeah, we'll sign you for a year. No, now we'll sign you for a month. And, yeah. and then and they can get away with it. Is it mostly or are, are the are the big sponsors? They w- I hate to ask because I, I probably should have looked this up. Are they mostly like energy drinks and chips yeah, and shoes and big one? Um, you know, electronics is another big one outside of Apple. I don't think Apple really uh, really sponsors people, but um, headphone companies. All um, right. Uh, apparel brand. Shout out to Fox. Fox is uh, Fox BMX has always supported me for for years and years. They oh, know that cool. I'm crazy, so right shout on. out to them. So, 
Right on. I am glad. I'm so glad. It's it's wonderful to hear a story. Uh, my favorite book of all time. Well, second favorite book, the one that I, I carry with me and you know may, maybe have it with me on my deathbed is is an old children's book called Ferdinand the Bull, from written in the 1930s. And it's about you know if if you find contentment, and it's a message I've been trying to get across to anybody who's willing to listen. If you find contentment, I don't care where it is, you hold on to it, and and tightly and you don't let go no matter what anyone else says around you and that is oh it's dumb that you're all it's like are you kidding this is what i love this is what i love to do so it's fantastic to hear uh, somebody else that you know got a chance to follow their dreams you know as far as you have and and it's it's, it's great it's inspiring thank you thank you so we got uh, two minutes before we go into our first break my guest by the way tonight and i know there's a couple people trying to call in is zach Yankush, you know what? Let's let's do this before you get a break. Why in the world? Because I I did not see this in your bio on here. Why are you called catfish? You know what? It was uh, I was really good at giving people nicknames uh, in BMX. There's lots of like funny nicknames, and my name being Zachary, like it was kind of unique. So I I never had need had the need for a nickname really, but I was really good at giving people nicknames. And then one day I was like, you know what? I'm going to give myself a nickname. And I thought about it for a while, and. Uh, I was watching this TV show, and there's like an outlaw biker gang, and there's like some biker chick look, looked like that she'd been in a hundred fights in her life. Um, had a patch on her jacket that just said "Property of Catfish," and it was like this <laughs> eyes open right there. I was like, "There's some bastard <coughs> named Catfish," and I was like, "That's gonna that's gonna be me." And uh, I and then I'd never heard of anybody giving themselves a nickname, and um, and I think if you were gonna give yourself a nickname, it would be something cool. Yeah. So, I wanted to give myself something so ridiculous. And I, I honestly, I didn't think it was going to stick. And then, um, all this sort of took off. Like my life kind of took off. And then, and then here we starts. are. Here. Catfish. Well, yeah, I was about to say the only other catfish I know goes way, way back. And that is, uh, catfish hunter. I believe one of the pitchers, relief pitchers for the New York, New York Yankees. Okay. Okay. I've heard, and, I've but heard. other than that, I have never heard catfish used as a nickname. Although yeah, it's pretty good. It's funny because then, um, an, an MTV show came out a couple years ago called catfish. It that, did? Yeah, and that really, really ruined my Google search results. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, we're going to go to break here in just a bit. My guest is Zach Yankush, otherwise known as Catfish. We are going to be talking Flat Earth in a little bit. We're just kind of getting his background because I'm sure most of you are like, who is this guy? But we're going to talk about Flat Earth when we come back, the journey, and where it's leading everybody. So hang on. We'll be back in three minutes. Real people, real radio. Initiating the truth frequency. This is Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, part two of four. Tonight may not be a call-in show at all, so I'm not even going to give out the phone number. The phone lines are turned on, but I'm not going to answer them because we have a guest tonight. I haven't had a guest in a little while. His name is Zach Yankush. He is otherwise known as Catfish. He is a BMX elite special forces something. Actually, he was there in the beginning days, but moreover, why we are talking to him tonight is because he went down, for better or for worse, the flat earth rabbit hole at some point. And so let's kind of dive into his journey. Zach, you with us? I am with you as well. Yes. So <laughs> what what in the world got you interested in the most ridiculous theory to ever hit the conspiracy plane, as it were, flat earth? What What got you into it? The most ridiculous. It is. It's uh, silly. It's insane. And yet, here you are talking to me. Uh, what? Uh, what's the deal, man? What? Uh, what? What? What got you? What? How long? How? First of all, how long you been into it? 
I've been uh, about two years now. Wow. So you've been into it pretty much, but you, but so were you kind of in the closet or were you talking to people? I know. No, no, I was like a, uh, I, what, what now I re- would refer to it now as like, I was 5% woke. Whereas I, I knew the government was a little bit sketchy, nine 11 questionable moon landing, no goddamn way. Like, <laughs> and, 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 uh, it, it literally was uh it was bob the rapper bob i'm a i'm a big fan of him and uh, i follow him on twitter and i saw that he he had posted some stuff about flat earth and i i hadn't even really heard heard much about it outside of like a couple stupid memes where flat earth you know the, the flat earth society has members all around the globe that classic one yeah and, and uh so i uh i was like this this guy believes the earth is is flat what so i uh i went back on some of his tweets and 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 shout out to, to bob because um uh I, I literally like you said i went down the rabbit hole and there's no way that i'm coming back and it was i think how a lot of people start you, you start trying to prove that it's it that this this is this guy's wrong there's no right. way that, 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 that this is, is a real thing so you know you start with looking into the moon landing and then you look into antarctica and then you look at flight patterns and and i fly quite a bit and um and at the end of the day it just comes down to you know, who do you trust everybody's so quick to say that we're crazy for believing this but they're the same ones that are are, are hanging on on by a thread watching politics or being fed sports or, or these these distractions from the from what's really going on and that's right. that's evident and it's like well I, I got to stop you for a second there. So you you heard Bob go on, and I remember his Twitter's thing because that was beginning of 2016 yeah. actually. So that was at least 18 months ago. And he yeah, when he came out again, he released Flatline against a song that he used a full like 60 second sound bite of Neil deGrasse Tyson and torched him and put him in the lyrics like the that the government's paying Neil deGrasse Tyson to keep his mouth shut. And we're, we're, let me back a little bit. Did you, were you into any other conspiracies before that? I mean, just the kind of the generic stuff. Did you believe in JFK? I'm not going to pin you down on, on a lot of conspiracies. Well, I mean, but, but, the, the, the Illuminati or, or you, the power elite, we can refer to them as. Right. Um, you know, I think uh, 9-11 was a really big, uh, a big question mark in my mind. Sure. Um, and, and just seeing how it, Looking back on it now, it's like it's so it's it was so obvious what was right. going on, and then you know, um, it was just I think a lot of those things led up to this, and it was just uh, so you weren't a babe in the woods or anything like that. You were no. like I never you never heard of an conspiracy conspiracy before in your life. At least you had you had known what some conspiracies were, and you right. should. I mean, if you're a free thinker, I mean, especially if you're doing what you love to do, you were probably open minded to a whole bunch of things. And so the the so after the Bob thing happened. Did you immediately start going into YouTube or what, what kind of branched off? What kind of got you into, and you and, and if they're not my videos, that's, that's fine. I don't care. But, um, I, I, and well, there's like, you know, obviously the, the Eric Dubay's video, that of course. was the, the, the big one for me where, and that video in particular, because I fly so much. Right. And, and again, it's, it all comes down to trusting yourself. And it's like, they're telling us one thing, but I'm seeing something completely different. And um, I think that was the like the, just being in the airplanes every day. And I remember being so because I've been traveling so much. And that's one of you know, there's so many awesome things about when you when you discover this stuff. And that was one of the other things where like I would travel so much and I wouldn't care getting on an airplane. I'm on another airplane. And then once I started realizing how things were, I couldn't wait to get on the airplane. Like I couldn't. I made sure that I had the window seat. And and I'm real big on social media, so like um, I, w- I would you know post. You, you know, I'm on the on the tarmac. Where's the horizon? Eye level. This is thirty two thousand feet. Where's the horizon? Eye level. Something's not right. Nice. So you're pinning yourself against the window with your phone or oh, whatever yeah. camera oh, you're yeah. using. Oh, yeah. Did Did anyone sitting next to you think you were just a little too excited about being on a window and a, on a window seat? Well, that's the funny thing too, because I've always been like super outspoken. Again, like I'm really big. Like, I, I I have ADD, and um, I just always try to make people laugh and um. I think what a lot of people, I'm assuming a lot of people go through the same thing when you first discover this is you, you want to tell everybody like the moment that, you know, like when you know that, 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 that this is not a spinning ball, you want to tell everybody. And then oh, what, yeah. I've learned, what I've learned is like, when you start telling people, 
that's when you really seem crazy. You know, you thought right. that I was crazy. You're sitting next to me in first class. I got diamond teeth on, 16 different color hair. You thought I was crazy before you sat next to me, old lady. <laughs> We're at 2,000 feet. I've got my damn iPhone with the with the level on it and the compass, and I'm like. <laughs> Yeah, because I'm sure you realize there's probably follow up conversations after they left that seat next to you where they got home. It's like, honey, I got to tell you, I was sitting next to this guy. I don't know what drugs, if there's a new drug on the street, but he was on it. Absolutely. (laughs) He's talking about sunspots on the clouds. The drink is not, the plane's not in a nosedive. I don't know what he's talking about. Oh my God. Well, I mean, everybody falls into that trap at least once. And I try to tell people, yeah, and I've actually had to chill uh, out a lot about it. Because I think when we talked uh, initially, um, when I started, again, I'm always a loud mouth. I want to like wake people up. I want to be that guy to, to, because I wish somebody would have woken me up, you know, 10 years oh, ago. Yeah. And, um, and then, like I told you, like uh, some of my social media numbers started to get skewed, which was really weird. And then like, I started looking in, into some other, um, some YouTubers and it was pre- in particular, like my Instagram where like in our industry, you know, that you're going to get X amount of followers a day. And then yeah. once I started hashtagging flat earth, um, my follower accounts started to slow down and then actually go into the negatives. And I'd never seen that before. And I was like, it was a couple of weeks that I, I couldn't figure it out. And then um, I remember I saw a flat earth asshole was talking about it. And I'm like, holy shit, They're like, how deep does this go? And how, how many people do I talk about this to? Because they're going to think I'm even more crazy, you know? Right, right. Yeah, it, it's it's really, really strange. And I, the the thing that I started a long time ago, which is, you know, you treat it like Fight Club, which is the first rule of, of Fight Club. And the second rule is you don't talk about Fight Club. And that doesn't mean you don't talk about it. It means you size up who you're going to yeah. talk about it to. You don't just go to your – I mean, I cannot tell you the amount of emails where people have got, said, oh, yeah, I went to a Thanksgiving. It's like people wait for Thanksgiving now. Oh, know, yeah, it's like okay. – Went to a family dinner and I just opened up and it's like, dude, you might as well said you were um, a, a gay transgender heroin addict, blah, blah. You just fill in the blank here all at once. It would it would have been it would have been easier to tell them that uh, right. than to yeah. say that you're in a flat earth because there I mean there's divorces have happened. Pe- oh, many people sure. have been suggested mental health facilities be- because of it. It's uh it's amazing. Anyway, sorry. So. So you start going down the road and, and you're getting more and more into it. You're flying now. Plane plane flights are actually interesting again because, yeah, I used to do business travel and you get really, really boring after a while because it's like, oh, I've done this. But but now you're like you just keep looking out and you want I know you you look around. You want to tell everybody in the cabin around you. But at the same time, you know full well that, you know, like I'm going to be traveling to Atlanta, but I am full. I am absolutely going to wear my Flat Earth Army shirt when I'm when I'm traveling on that first day. And I hope people ask me about it. I really, really do. Uh, when did you get that weird? I mean, it sounds like you latched onto it pretty quick. When was the the flip aha moment? When you all of a sudden, when when you went from doubting, it's like no way, no way, no way. Ah, uh, crap! It's real, isn't it? When it did was. You, it, it was. I, I live in, in Huntington Beach, California, and I uh-huh. remember we were out. We were out at the the beach, and I'm like, uh, just some of the reading that I did, and I'm just like looking at the at the horizon. Like my my field of view is so massive, you know. Like when you're at the beach, right? It's so wide, and then I'm just like. There's no way. There's there's no way. How many of these flats equal the globe? Like right. it, it's and and it, that that was the moment that I was like, this is it, and that's the moment that my friends will tell you that I went off the deep end. <laughs> yeah, and and I've. It's funny because you know science will come back, even though there have been studies like you know the 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 university students out in out of Kansas determined the entire state of Kansas is perfectly flat, you know, within a, a few hundredths of a percent. And that's just one state. There's like nine states in the in the in the union that are like that, including like Florida and, and others like that. And science will say, well, no, that's just a pool table that's sitting on top of a of, of a globe. It's like, yeah, but how many of those pool tables can you actually say are legit before exactly. you start running out of room? Because exactly. because these things keep having to link up, you know, like like Legos. I I, I so one of the descriptions I used was it's kind of like trying to cover a uh, basketball with wheat thins, you know, those little hard crackers. Exactly. Yeah. You're you're gonna have gaps sooner or later. It's not gonna work. But science keeps you know we we've just bought it for so long. That's fantastic. So 
And the, and the other one I just want to say ahead. quickly because uh, when I tell people this, when people ask me, and when, when I say this, this is one of the ones that I can see people's aha moments. And I forget where I, where, where I read this from, but uh, it basically said that if you believe that the earth is a spinning ball and that we're on a globe and that I have a magic shovel in my hand and that yep. that shovel can dig 100,000 tons with each scoop. You believe, if you believe that we're on a spinning ball and I keep digging through the earth, you magically, you believe that at some point I'm going to magically flip and I'm going to be digging up. Right. And when yeah, I, that's, that's, and, and yeah, if you're ki kids, we all, you know, if, if you're kind of imaginary kids, you're, you're going to remember that. Yeah. In fact, not only that, it gets weirder. It, that is as you're digging down. So if you believe that the earth is 8,000 miles across and it's 4,000 miles to the center, right? As you get closer to that center point, you become lighter and lighter to the point where the literally there's that point in the middle, supposedly middle of the globe, where it, if you carved it out, there would be zero gravity. And then it would start to get heavier and heavier as you get got through the other side. And for me, it's like, yeah, you're absolutely right. That that doesn't make sense in itself. But for me, it was the just the core of the Earth in general which was, I didn't know. I mean, there's so many cool little factoids that flat earthers learn. In fact, you, people say, well, you're, you're crushing science, you're destroying science. It's like, no, it's, it's, it's the op opposite. We're teaching a lot of science to kids because they, you know, we're teaching all sorts of little things, like, for example, the deepest hole ever drilled. You know, we, we see, we've seen the core of the earth pictures, you know, where it has the, the, the red and the orange and the yellow and the white band, you know, you know, the white, the white milky center, right? It looks like a cross section of a gobstopper. Yeah, in third grade, in third grade, we learned. Yeah, we, we've all seen this, right? And yet when, it, and I go, wow, how did they, you know, when you're young, you, you look, it's like, how did they know this? And then you finally look up years and years later. It's like, what's the deepest hole ever drilled? A thousand miles? No, a hundred miles. It's like 1% of the center of the earth distance would be 40 miles. And the deepest hole we've ever drilled is eight. Eight miles. So, how, well, when in the world are you telling us this? Yeah, it, it to you. Yeah, and 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 my my argument, and again, I'm not crushing science here when I say this. I'm not saying that I hate science. I'm not anti-science, right? I'm not throwing Bibles at, at scientists' head necessarily. But what I'm saying is, is like, look, yeah, light bulbs, microwave ovens, um, air conditioning, those are all great things. But you're leaving out, you're, you're taking leaps of faith, which normally you wouldn't do, when, especially because they say in the small print, it's like, well, we don't really know what the core of the earth looks like. We're kind of extrapolating, we're speculating, we're expanding. It's like, yeah, but you say that in really small print on a completely different book. And the kids, when they're nine year old, you know, they see this cross section and then they see it again when they're 15 and they're 18. It's like, that's gospel. That's like, oh, yeah, that's what the core of the earth looks like. It's like, but it doesn't. And uh, I sorry. Anyway, hey, we are absolutely on the same page. Oh, oh it just it just kills me when they when they do that. They they have taken it too far. They see, don't it's, it's, go ahead. The, the problem is like, I, and, and I run this into this a lot because a lot of my friends are like, oh yeah, I got fish believes it's flat earth. So I've got some dude that's four Bud Lights deep coming over to me. He's like, you believe the earth's flat, huh? You believe the earth's flat? And it, and part of me wants to literally argue with him all night. But then it's like I realize explaining to people that aren't that don't get it it's like it's it's like explaining algebra to a three-year-old right they, 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 they they're, they're so far beyond comprehending the basic steps of math they're not going to understand where, where i'm coming from what you're, you're absolutely right now because it's like there's and no what, easy way of saying it you know like there's no, i was just telling these kids the other day i was like they're like you believe the earth is flat and it's like yeah but then when they want to know and it's like well there's so much more in depth. Like we didn't go to the moon. Gravity's not real. I try. Over. What I try to tell people is, you know, l like you. I mean, you're you're not gonna be able to convince people in the 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 biggest mistake that all flat earthers make is that they forget the amount of time when they have that aha moment. The, the time, the, all that frustration, those days and hours and weeks or whenever they lost sleep, that magically just evaporates. And then they think, oh, well, I can just tell this to somebody and in two, an hour or two, I can convince them of this. And it's like, no, man, it took you six days to, to figure right. it out. Your exactly. friends, you know, and if your friend's not as intelligent or as insightful or as intuitive, they're going to have problems. So uh, what I try to do is like, look, you just all you can do is plant the seed. And yeah. hope and hope for the best. The, the the question that I've kind of boiled it down to nowadays, and and I usually can do it in under ninety seconds, is I say, okay, 
you know, because they say that you do think the earth is flat. And I go, yes, I do. I go, why don't you think it's flat? And then I try to answer the questions for them and ahead of time, not to give them a chance to, to you know, I, I try to say, well, this is what your chess move is going to be. You're going to say that it's because of some space agency. And I don't care what, what the U.S. or the Japanese, or the Europeans, whatever. You're going to lean on some space agency and say, they've shown us the pictures. They've shown us the movies. They've got people that are doing this. I go, that's fine. That's great. How did you know before that? Meaning... The first space agency, space agency that was you know, founded, you know, I'm not going to count the Soviets because that's a whole other thing, was NASA in 1958. The first picture wasn't taken until 1972. How did you know before 1972? It's not like we just woke up in the 1970s and figured out we were on a globe. We knew we were on a globe for the previous 20 generations at right. least. So how did you know? And that's when you throw it back at them. And then they, they, their wheels start spinning a little bit, and then they, and they'll say, "Well, science told us." That's the answer you're looking for. They'll say, "Science told us." I go, "Really? What exactly did they tell you? What exactly do you remember from science?" You're, what are you going to say? Sticks and shadows. If you're lucky, you'll get the sticks and shadows argument. Right. Most of them, though, will say the boats going over the horizon. They'll right. say, "Well, there's ships going over the horizon." I'm going, "Really? Give me a date. Give me the name of the experiment." As far as I can tell, there you know I'm not going to count the the flat Earth experiment the, that they did uh, over in England, but find me a name of an experiment that they you know monitored ships going over the horizon in the ocean. There was none, okay. none that I has ever been recited back to me ever in, as long as I've been doing this. And see, that's the thing too. If you're trying to explain that to somebody, they're like, they, they it's right in front of the face, and they don't get it. And it's like, okay, the, the ships are going over the horizon. I'll give you that. That's that's where the curve of the Earth is. Those ships, they're, that's that's going over the horizon. Right. And why the f don't we see planes going over the horizon? There you go. Or meteors coming up over the horizon. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and and I know everyone's different. Every single person, because honest to God, it really depends on their level of education, what they specialize in, who their family members were. I mean, if they've got family members in the aerospace industry, whew, then you got a pride issue you got to deal with. I mean, I had a guy yell at me. My, world, my ex-girlfriend of five years, her dad is, uh, is a doctor in uh, astronomy at Harvard. Right. Right. I mean, like on this station alone, right, on this network that we're on, we have, I think, five shows that are pro-FE and two that are against it, publicly against it. And I actually did an interview on one of those against shows, and I didn't know going in. And, and this guy was an amateur astronomer. And he, he just kept going on the same path. And you're right. Sometimes people just do not get it. He's going, I've seen the moons of Jupiter through my telescope. And I'm going, and? <laughs> so, you know, and then I tried to explain, you know, planetarium and all the possible things. And he goes, and then he go, I've seen the rings of Saturn. I'm going, you know, it's just the same question in a different wrapper, right? And then it's the same thing over and over. And it killed me. It just It just killed me. So... Let me um let me ask you this because I remember this story that you told and I don't know if we're we're that far into it uh, or if you want to save it till the next thing we got seven minutes till till to the next break. The you were doing a BMX thing in Iraq, yeah, right, yeah, and and tell tell you yeah an interesting thing happened to you over there. Yeah, well we do uh, we do shows for some friends and I do shows for um, a company that does USO shows for uh, maybe like. Gosh, it was probably nine years ago. Okay. Um, um, my friend Christian Schaff um, came up with the idea that he had uh, he was in a band and he'd been taking um, bands over to Iraq to go do shows in, in different uh, war zones. Right. Um, so you know, just uh, boost morale for the troops. Exactly. And uh, he, he got the idea to do BMX shows. So he brought sure. a bunch, bunch of us over there, and uh, we've been doing it for like the last seven seven or eight years. But uh, we were at a show in uh, Djibouti, Africa, and uh, all the guys on the on the, the the tour with me, you know, bust my balls about being a being believing in the flat Earth. So in one of the shows, they were like, "Oh, all right, up next, Catfish is riding. Catfish from Youngstown, Ohio, lives in L.A. He's also a flat Earther." Boom! Everybody, uh, you know, a couple hundred soldiers get their laughs. Um, after the show, um, we're uh, having some drinks. They have they have like a two drink minimum over there where the guys can drink two drinks. Mm -hmm. uh, doing just meeting up, up with everybody, and this guy comes out and he's like, uh, "Who's the guy? That, who, who's the guy that believes the Earth is flat?" And I was like, "Oh, that's me." And he pulls me aside. He's like, "Tell me about the flat Earth." And I, this was a, a year and a half ago, so I I still had really limited knowledge. But we started talking about Antarctica. And he, when I started talking about Antarctica, he like started nodding his head. 
And uh, he was like, yo, uh, I've been in the Navy for 17 years, and uh, I know the earth is flat. And um, he had talked to, he said he knew people that are in, the, there's a bunch of people in the military, but obviously they're not going to let that out. Sure. I remember that we had a big conversation because, like I said, like I'm the loud mouth. I want to like <laughs> be this guy. You want to wear it on a t-shirt if you can. Yeah, right. And he's yeah. the guy that really told me, he's like, you need to just chill out with this. He said, uh, stop referring to it as a flat earth. Start, re- stop, start referring to it as you don't believe you're on a spinning ball. Um, use the term creator. Um, and that's a crazy thing, too, because I've been an atheist for probably the last 25 years, and I don't subscribe to any religion. I had Catholicism pushed down my throat, went to a Catholic grade school, religious uh, college and high school. And um, I, 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 myself, like a lot of people, was just like, oh, the Big Bang, this happened, aliens, like this, we're nothing. We're just like a little speck of dust. And then it's crazy, like the full on paradigm shift that my life's had since I've discovered this, because it's like, and I still haven't figured it out. I think like a lot of us, we still have lots of questions, but oh, yeah. it's, it's very, very clear that this is not just a, a bang that just happened. And this is all just come, came from nothing. Like this right. is something, it, it's something put, put this here. And, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. All, I mean, yeah. You know, uh, up until now, you know, the question has always been, you know, the, the joke that's put back on scientists, which is, you know, because they always harp on, well, there was this big bang, you know, this massive, the, the biggest explosion of all, blah, blah, blah. And, but you have to ask them, you know, there's two questions that, that come at them. One is, all right, well, uh, who who create, you know, how did the big bang start? You know, and they say, well, it was spontaneous. And then you they say, all right, fine. What happened before the big bang? And they'll come back with, well, there was nothing. It's like you, you realize you're quote. You might as well be quoting scripture exactly. when when you say this because it's like in the beginning there was nothing, <laughs> you know. And then let the real you know, the whole thing. It's like you're you're saying that at a non it just happened up. It was just an accident versus that it, somebody actually flipped the switch and turned this thing on. Right. And uh, yeah, science has done all sorts of fun things. That and of course the double slit experiment, which science claims science the, the T-shirt which Peanut Gallery showed showed to me recently, which was one of my quotes, which is uh, science. And I didn't. It was just a modification of an original quote, which is science is just uh, magic without mystery. You know, if you can repeat it enough times, it's not magic anymore. It's it's science. Science will lay claim to it. But there's some stuff that they lay claim to nowadays, like the double slit experiment, where things can exist and not exist at the same time, right. even though they can't explain it. You know, it's like the old tree in the forest thing. You know, if a tree falls in the forest and there's no one there to see it, it doesn't make a sound. It's like, no, because the tree isn't there. P- potentially, the tree isn't there at all. It, it all comes down to that human thing. And yet science is perfectly fine with that. They, they, they take these massive... I don't even know how to how to put it exactly. They just take it and they they make they minimize the the impact of it. You know, it's like, oh yeah, well you know, the beginning of the universe it started with a big bang. It's like, really? You're just going to write that down? That big bang? That's how everything started? You're going to fit everything according to that? No, yeah. no, not not buying it for a second. So that so that military guy uh, that was out in I'm sorry, what what country in Africa? Djibouti, Africa. Was that a city? Is that a city or a? Uh, That's a country. It's a country. It borders Ethiopia. Holy smokes! I didn't even know Djibouti was a country. Yeah, me either. Before I went there. Holy smokes! It must be really small. I've ne- I've literally never heard of it, and I've been to Africa. Yeah, there, well, the I um, uh, uh, the uh, interesting that he would bring up the creator aspect of it. Yeah, and that he was really uh, adamant about um, me saying it that way because he even asked me. He's like. Well, what do you what do you tell people? What do you when you're trying to win people over? And, and I, you know, the earth is the earth is flat. We're stationary. We're not moving. And he's like, it's it's much better to to, to go with the approach that, that that something created this. Yeah, interesting. Well, I mean, there is a huge. I mean, the the, the one I'm going to this weekend is a, is a biblical based flat earth conference. The one that Rob Skeeve is going to next month is a biblical based flat earth conference. There is a huge cr- Christian contingent at the Raleigh co- conference that's going to be happening in the fall, the big international one. I mean, let's face it. It does. In fact, I was asked that question by a producer today. They said, what's your stance on? I was going, look, if it was created, if it was built this way, it couldn't have been built this way on accident. You can exactly. give me big, you can give me the big bang all you want, but this model 
this is an accident. A globe? Yeah, I might be able to give you that. You know, the, the whole, oh, hey, we're going to break here. Uh, we're going to come right back third segment with Zach Yankush, a.k.a. Catfish. Stay tuned. Your protection from, 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 from deception. This is Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, and this is part three of four. We got special guest tonight, BMX fiend, Zach Yankush, also known as Catfish. Not to, be conf- <laughs> Not to be confused with the MTV show of the same name, which, what was that show even about? Uh, I think it was about lying to girls on the internet, which I have done. Oh, I've, I've definitely done that before. Oh my lord! Yeah, that would. You're absolutely right because it, because you're and you couldn't really necessarily rebrand not then. Right, and that was the messed up thing is because now it's a verb. Like catfishing is an actual verb. In oh, vernacular. like yeah. like cougaring and exactly planking yeah. and yeah, that's awful. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> these days. Uh, so you um so you got into flat Earth. You got confronted by a military guy who said, uh, "Yeah, I might be into this." And then you and now you've just been absorbing everything you can. Have you have you gone? Have you snuck into any meetups? Have you have you met well, any I've, other? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Wait, no, I, I've tried. Well, I, I travel so much that it's it's kind of hard for me to do that. But um, gotcha. I've just immersed myself in just a lot of YouTube videos, lots of books. Um, right. Uh, just and again, everyday experiments. You know, like back to science. Talking about science. You know, like I don't. I, Science frustrates me, but I love the scientific method. Right on. I, and by the way, I'm sorry. The every once in a while, somebody chimes into me on a different channel. Uh, if I can say happy birthday to Sip S I P P in the live chat, which I am not monitoring currently because I'm doing too many other things, including monitoring the call board. And we may actually take some calls here in a little bit. I know that somebody from New Jersey was hanging on for the line. I don't know. They were probably list- listening to the show. If you have questions for Zach about Flat Earth or anything else in general, but, but don't direct the questions to me necessarily. Direct them at Zach if you want to. Call in. Hit me with no. the hard hitting questions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't don't start asking them particle physics questions or anything weird like that. We actually don't get a lot of dissension from we don't get I in fact I have gotten very, very few globalists that have called into this show ever since I've been and this is my hundred and fifteenth show. And you'd think well, you meant remember trolls are lazy. Yeah. So trolls, yeah, they'll comment all day long in, in YouTube comment sections and forums, but they will rarely do emails and even more rare is the phone calls. I think I've gotten two or three phone calls, actual trolls. The drunk ones don't count. No, you know, that's, that's, the reason for that is most of them are in their bathroom masturbating to a uh, JC Penney catalog. <laughs> I was going to say uh, masturbating to the uh, oh who is that guy that I just that I just saw on YouTube. I should look him up real quick. He's from that was it Team 10 
I didn't even know this guy existed until I was looking the worst ranked YouTube videos of all time, uh-huh. and it, and it was a video called Everyday Bro. You guys want to? Well, yeah, Jake Paul, a uh-huh. Disney, a yeah, Disney he- kid, wrong wannabe. Literally, he you know he he made a video called it's oh it's Everyday Bro right. Fe- featuring Team Ten, this this group of, yeah. uh, and oh my God, it made it's already climbed to number seven on the most hated video of all time, uh, in in YouTube. And that's pretty impressive. To yeah, do but it more that. importantly, how many views does it have? Eighty three million. Uh, think about how much money Jake Paul makes. He doesn't care if anybody loves it or does hates it. He's still making. Yeah. He's still getting paid. Yeah, you're probably right. Well, if he's sponsored by somebody, they probably get the money. But it's just, oh, I, 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 so I had to watch it just for the heck of it. Anyway, the point is, yes, trolls are probably big Jake Paul fans. And, and I wanted to like it. I really did. I watched it. I was completely objective because I knew nothing about this guy. By the time I got to the end, I literally, I just said, I hate this person. It's right. I, I, I don't even know. I don't even know why exactly I hate him, but, but I hate him. But that's so. that's that's social media in 2017. I've got so many friends that are they, they make their living off of YouTube. Right. And it doesn't matter if you hate them, if you love them. All that matters is you click that like button and they're getting that view count. Uh, yeah, absolutely right. Look at um, oh geez, who is one of the other people? I mean, of course, some of the big ones like um, uh, Gangnam Style still is up there, but that's just because it has such a huge amount of views yeah. that even the dislikes make it technically because this is based on dislike, but it also shows the percentage. It has a very low percentage of dislikes by comparison, as opposed to say uh, Rebecca Black, who did oh, that. Yeah. You know, Friday. Friday. Oh my God. It's scoring like eighty three percent bad, but yeah, she made something off of it. To be to be sure, it was um, anyway. Um, anyway, I'm, I didn't even get out the phone number for people to call in. Phone number to call in tonight, by the way, if you want to call in the station direct, it's two one three two three 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 nine nine eight. That's two one three two three 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 nine nine eight. We should probably preface uh, these phone calls by saying that uh, the, the actual reason that um, uh, we even were introduced was uh, I got a, d- a bunch of different messages on Snapchat from people saying that hey th- he they were they heard you talking about me on your on your program and uh, so the social media world is a little bit nuts so I can only imagine what some of these calls might be. Uh, oh no, I I am not worried. Are you kidding, man? Oh, I'm <laughs> not worried at all. I'm just I'm just saying that things might get a little out of hand real quick. <laughs> got it i'm got sorry peanut peanut gallery is also saying uh if you can should have him take some call yes i I was already doing that Aiden. in fact have you not been listening to the show peanut gallery i already said we were going to take calls holy smokes all right uh i'm sorry the other phone number to call in which is the normal number but we're kind of bouncing back and forth until we can figure out which one's the better number because i know there's a little bit of lag with one of them it's 720 that is 720-897-6111. And you remember, if you call that one and the show is not on, you're going to go to voicemail. And you can leave me a message, but it's not going to be me on the voicemail. It's going to be some generic British lady. So anyway, let's look at the chat thing. Um, I'm going to pick up this one. We got a couple in here already. I'm going to pick up the one from New Jersey first. He's been on there for a while, and I don't know if he actually has a question or if he's just hanging out and listening to the show. Let's try it. Ready? This one, New Jersey, 908 area code. Are you still hanging around there? Oh, he's scrambling. He's walking. We have no idea what this guy's doing. Dude? He's on the line. He's from Jersey. He might be holding up a bank. I, exactly. Exactly. Are you in the process of a robbery right now? Key your handset twice if you can hear me, son. No. I saw that line from... Uh, uh, yes, sir. Hello, hello, hello. No, he's gone. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna disconnect this guy just like I'm gonna yeah. mute him first, and then we're gonna say drop, drop him. R.I.P. And then we're gonna pick up this one from New York, six four six area code. Let's see what he's got. Ready? Six four six area code. You're on live with Strange World right now. Who are you? Hey! Oh, I can't believe I'm calling. Uh, Mark Sargent right now. This is amazing. Seriously? Uh, I'm from, I'm in Brooklyn. Right on. What's going on and, in Brooklyn? Uh, my name is Sage. Hey. Uh, I just watched, I watched your, I watched your uh, uh, Patricia, Patricia Steer show today. Cool. I've been following you for a long time. Thanks. And, uh, oh, there's so many subjects that I would want to talk about. 
I unfortunately um, we it, don't it, have a ton of time. So right. pick your pick your most right. favorite. So let me let me. What do you here, got here? Uh, video games. So you're a big gamer. Right? I am a big gamer. Always have been. Do you ever do you ever play that game Civilization? <sighs> no, but I, I I know what it is. So go ahead. Anyway, well, I, um, I, 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 no, I, I like I like those you games. Check like, it out. Okay. Like Sim City, like like the. Uh, anyway, well, that's just I, it. I, I could was go a, into games forever and ever with you, uh, like I was, Starcraft, I was Warcraft, a, all those. I'm old enough that I played SimCity. I was a huge SimCity 2000 guy, and then when they came out with the version that was like ten times as hard, it's like, ah, oh, it's not nearly as fun. Uh, I, but still, hey, I, nothing wrong. I, I I love it. The top down build your own stuff, really cool. I but why is there something really interesting about it? That well, in Civilization. Like? Well, in Civilization, the new game, they have, like, secrets where you uncover, uh, there's the Knights Templar, where you uncover, and you're, and it's like, gives you secrets. Uh, you uncover Atlantis, and it gives you secrets, and, like, scientists. It's really interesting. <clears throat> it's right. truth, truth in plain sight, stuff that, like, uh, Russian Vids talks about, and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, look, I, I still play Warcraft, and Warcraft has so many, <laughs> so many symbolism, uh, you know, based I Starcraft. Things. Starcraft is amazing. Well, yeah, Starcraft is well, as you know, you know, it re- literally, literally replaced chess in uh, South Korea. I mean, the fact that it, it, it okay. I mean, it, it was so well balanced. It's probably the most well balanced game of all time, as far as stra- top down strategy yeah. games. It was, it was a beautiful game. So, I exactly. loved it so much that when Starcraft Two came out, I just didn't care. It's like, look, what, what are you going to do? You, you're not going to be able to. It's, it's basically just a different wrapper of the same game. So no, I was a huge, huge Star Trek guy. Right. So, any uh, any yeah, shout outs? Yeah, tough... Go ahead. Yeah, well, I want to shout out to all the people in New York that are all um, uh, basically closet flat earthers because um, it's really hard to be a flat earther in New York. I got to say, um, because um, I don't have a lot to lose. You know, I'm an independent uh, worker. I do my own work. Um, sure. But a lot of people, like, if you start talking about this in this city, th- people go crazy, and they think you're insane. So it probably um, why I just want to say you're not alone, and I'd I'd love to meet you all one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Probably why you know it's one of the only major cities that hasn't done a meetup yet, which is which yeah, is fantastic. Yeah, you said that earlier, and I and I so I wanted to. That's why I wanted to call, and so I wanted to say New York. No, there are people, <laughs> and I'm one of them. So there. You yeah, go. I mean, Los Angeles just put you know just scheduled their first two meetups. In fact, I I was I was hammering on New York and Los Angeles, and I was like, look, you guys got to you guys got to get with the program. And then Los Angeles, all of a sudden, yeah, well, they're they're gonna have one in Rancho Cucamonga and one in Santa Monica simultaneously. It's like, pff, well, there you go. So what's what's the deal, New York? Somebody freaking put something together. You know who I'm talking to. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. All right, man. Hey, you have a good night, okay? You too. Thanks for calling. Thanks All for right. letting me talk. Bye. Okay. <laughs> Bye-bye. All right. So let's pick up uh, this one's California 510 area code. Let's pick them up. You are on live with Strange World right now. Who are you? Do I care? I probably do. So what do you got? Mark, what's going on? Pittsburgh, California. <laughs> you kill me with that every time. Nobody lives in Pittsburgh, I'm California. Not, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, you got one there. <laughs> so what? 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 What's on your mind? You got a? You got a question? You got a comment? What? What do you got? Oh man, just quick comment, man. It's a uh, pretty special week for me. Uh, first of all, I appreciate the uh, birthday shout out. The chef shout out was me. Appreciate oh, that was that. you? Yeah, that's your boy, man. Oh, right on. Happy birthday, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm on vacation this week, so it's the first time that I've ever, I actually got to sit in my own home and I uh, got my kids up in another room. They're over there cracking up right now because uh, I'm live. Shout out to Zubu and the rest of the crew and everybody over there, Patricia and everybody in the live feeds, wishing me a happy birthday. So, yeah, it's a pretty cool week this week. Oh, right on. Right on. That's excellent. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. But, yeah, that's all I had. Enjoying the show. Enjoying your guests. Uh, continue to keep up the great work, man. And, uh, yeah, I'm a, Go ahead and tune back in the rest of the show and try to uh, open up the lines. Nothing too particular in my mind. Just excited to uh, be able to see another birthday and uh, about to be 35. All right. Well, hey, best birthday wishes to you. And uh, I'm sure we will talk again before the eclipse literally cuts the United States in half. So you have a good one, okay? All right. Yo. All right, you too. You and your guests have a good one. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right. Peace.
Okay, let's pick up. Oh, he's back, Mister. I had my phone in my pocket while I was jogging. Apparently, uh, nine oh eight area code. Let's pick him up. See if he's still there. Nine oh eight area code. Are you paying attention now? Oh my God, Mark Sergeant! <laughs> Mark Sergeant, can you I hear would me? Take that as a, uh, yes, yes, I can totally hear you. <laughs> oh my God, I have the father of flat Earth himself on the phone. Oh boy. And I was You're not jogging. I was actually at a pool party at the country club I used to work at. And the funny thing is, everyone there knows I'm a flat earther. And I have convinced a handful of people and a whole handful of my friends from my job are all flat earthers now. Right it on. It's such a shame that I did not catch you. Dude, I had you in my pocket on and no, off. No, like, no, no, no. It's totally, no, no, no. Party. Don't feel, it's totally my fault. I had oh, you, dude, I saw I you on the you line. On the phone, it would have been a party of like 10 people all being like Mark Sargent. Like, oh no, it's such a shame. That's actually, that's now, actually worse. I've had, I uh, no, that would have been worse oh. <laughs> because then nobody, oh. nobody can hear anybody. Everyone's just oh yelling. God. You don't even understand. Wait till I sh- fucking, so, wait till everyone hears this and they, and cause, cause they've been waiting, bro. Everyone's been waiting, like hoping oh. I would catch you and I missed you. All right. Okay. Well, okay. Who, who should I give shout well, outs to then? By the Go way, ahead. my name is uh, Johnny. I'm from uh, New Jersey, Somerset area. I am the first flat earther I've known. And I have, honestly, I have convinced my cousin who's a Marine. He, he's all about that life. He knows it. You know, those Marines, they, you know, you teach them about the Coriolis, but they know it's a fraud. Right on. I've convinced half of my fucking fraternity. I go to, uh, you know what? I don't even care. I go to King University. Half of my fraternity are flat earthers now. I'm not right going to drop. You are the man. Is, no, but it yeah, is what it that's is. awesome. <laughs> yeah, that dude. Awesome. I just got back from a music festival called Big Dubs in uh, upstate PA. And I met 10 different flat earthers. And before that, I got back from a music festival called Disco. And I'm part of, uh, you know, Nathan Thompson in the Flat Earth group. That I, I do know Nathan Thompson. At, yeah. Uh, 40,000 strong. Right. Yeah. You know what's great? You're on that group. You're chilling. And all of a sudden you see a post from a man saying, hey, who's at Camp Bisco? Any Flat Earthers? And it's great, man. You're at a music festival. And next thing you know, you meet another Flat Earther, you know. So it's getting out there, man. People are waking up. Right and on. it's that community, man. The people at little festivals who are all about them chakras waking up that third eye. They're realizing the truth left and right. That's awesome. That's really, really great, man. I wore a flat earth shirt at a music festival, and I got nothing but love. Nothing but people walking up to me being like, dude, I've heard about it, so tell me what you can say. And they were willing to hear about it. It's different different from what it was a year ago, man. I was alone a year ago, and it's a different life now. I agree. Well, good for you. That's that's, that's fantastic. Sergeant, all I want to say, man, I just want to thank you, you know. You were, uh, you know, you were one of those guys that broke me through. I'm I'm happy to do it. You listen... You're listening to those YouTube videos, and before you know it, you fall asleep and you wake up, and a flat Earth video is playing called <laughs> "They're Hiding God," <laughs> and the most soothing voice is uh, oh, talking to you boy. while you're sleeping, telling you the truth. Yeah, again, people should not listen to me while you go to sleep. I'm warning you, don't do it. The CIA Sergeant, pays top, I pays have, topped all after, over that. After that day, after that day, I didn't sleep for two weeks. After that day, <laughs> I spent six months trying to prove to myself it's a ball. You know, I got to get that shirt that says uh, I became a flat earther because I tried to prove to myself it was a ball and I failed. It's out there. I somewhere. failed. Yeah, dude. The moment Donald Trump became president and uh, it wasn't Hillary anymore, I was like, okay, I think it's a, I think it's safe to come out to my friends that, uh, you know, the earth is flat. Oh, yeah. Know? Yeah. Okay. Between, between that and uh, the Patriots winning the Super Bowl, which I can't even imagine how that happened, and the wrong... You, you uh, know that theory. All those things that people claim would never happen all of a sudden start happening. Well, what yep. was that? The Oscars, right? Uh, the, the Oscars. Oscars was another one. People thought Oscars. it never happened, and it did. Yeah. That slip-up was bad. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Well, the that and Ky- Kyrie was, you Irving. Know when, uh, <laughs> dude, you know when the Cavaliers were playing that last final game? I put down a hundred dollars to the to my buddy, uh, my buddy Tom in my fraternity. He's my little. That yeah. the Cavaliers would win. They would come from nothing because it, you know, it was that year of things that would never happen happening. Sadly, nice. I lost. I thought the Cavaliers would win, and Kyrie Irving would get a whole nother wave of you know publicity. But you know, it is what it is. All hundred bucks is okay. But uh, yeah, you know, right on. Go Kyrie. If it wasn't for him, I don't know where we'd be right now. 
Right on. Well, hey, tell your tell your friends that I was on with you. You know, well, I'll I'll put the re the, the rerun will be up here on on One TFR. One last thing, and, Sergeant. One and, last and you, thing. Let me what, give a what, shout what? out. Uh, I'm in Jersey. There, there's like you. I've been listening to the episodes. You know, I've been listening to you for you know 100 episodes deep. I've yeah. been in it since like you know end of 2015. But uh, dude, there's no flat Earth meetups in Jersey. I'm in Central Jersey. You know, one of the most condensed states, and. The only flat earthers I know are the ones I've convinced for my job, my fraternity, school, people I meet at festivals. Why isn't there a meetup? I heard your episode a couple uh, couple sessions ago, and Zulu gave that shout out. I hit him with that email, you know, let me know whenever there's, uh, there's a meetup. I would love it, you know. I know New All England's right. got their thing going on, but... Jersey. Jersey has to get their shit together, you know? All right, Jersey. All, right. all my Jersey flat earthers, man, get yourself together, you know? Okay. Make a group. We're out there. <laughs> all right, Jersey, you heard him. Represent. You can't let the all rest right, of the Sergeant. country knock you, especially Boston. You can't let Boston push you around like that. Anyway, you have a good rest of your night, Same okay? New York. How is in there? Like, I know, I know, I know. It'll, like, Central it'll happen. Every week. Why? I, you know? I know. It'll have faith, man. It'll happen. <laughs> I'll hey, talk man. to you soon, okay? Once again, let's give that rally cry. Beat them drums. Get people up. All right. All right, man. I'll All right, talk to you Sergeant, soon. Dude, great hearing from you. Yo, keep your eyes peeled for me. You know, I'm gonna, I will. You know, I'll be calling in from here on in. If, I okay. didn't know it was this easy. Okay. <laughs> well, it may not All be right. that easy. Take anyway, easy, have a good bro. night. See ya. Have a good one. Much- All right. I like He's his out enthusiasm. Here. That's flat Earth for you. Flat Earth has tons of enthusiasm. Okay, uh, let's pick up one, at least one more before the break. Maybe two, depending on what's going on. This one's going to be New York six four eight four five area code eight four five area code New York. What's going on? I think I know who this is. <laughs> hey, Mark. It's Mark from New York. How you doing, brother? Hey, what's going on? It's Zulu One from YouTube, Flat Earth the champion. <laughs> What's uh what's going on? What's uh hey, what do you think of the show so you. far? Awesome, loving it, Zach. You're cool as hell. I actually love that that super movie. I've watched it a billion times back then. That's great. Thanks, I'm man. glad that you're open minded and and you know looking into this. That's incredible. That's incredible. Yes. And yes. It's the hardest thing to come out and talk. For sure, for sure. You actually watched the movie? Holy smokes! Now I gotta. Uh, well, I'm gonna probably rip it from somewhere. Yeah. Oh yeah, I well, I was always into BMX because my friend raced, but I couldn't do that shit. I was a, I was into dirt bikes and quads. I'm too big and lumbering for BMX. Well, I was about to say <laughs> yes, big and lumbering is probably the, the operative word there. BMX, I I know they build BMX for for some some pretty beefy guys, but I don't know how how well you could how much air you could get. Oh, wait, there's some big guys in, in BMX. Yeah, there's some 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 guys. Hey, I'm sorry. I didn't even. I should have asked this question, Zach. What's the uh, uh, what's the most common injury in BMX? Um, the scaphoid, the boxer, the boxer's fracture. Um, the one in, in the hand, the the little bone in your hand from uh, hit, like from holding the handlebars coming down hard. That's like the big one. Um, ACLs and PCLs are big ones. Those are uh, a lot of my friends have either cadavers or they've gone through them. Some of my friends have literally gone through five or six operations. Wow. Well, wow. any, any uh, but is is it safer than most? Is, is it? Let me put it this way: are the, are the crashes worse in BMX than they are in other things, or not as bad? Uh, well, I, I mean that that's a it's a really hot topic right now, especially with uh, what's going on. People are really starting to look at CTEs, those the the head injuries that a lot of football players go through, and the BMX riders are going through as well. So there's that that level of uh, of danger factor where it's like, man. We're not. We haven't really looked long term into what just a few uh, head injuries can do to a person. Hmm. All right. I mean, but I mean, is uh, not to dwell on it too much. But do our, our head injuries? I mean, it sounds like yeah, you get stress fractures and you get little things here and there. But uh, do you land? I mean, let's talk to you. I mean, you sound perfectly fine, at least right now. Do do you land on your head quite a bit? Uh, I don't like, thankfully I, the, the type of riding that I like to do is called flatland. It's like tricks on the ground. Got it. But, um, uh, unfortunately a lot of my friends have had, um, you know, I've got friends that have, that have, uh, you know, they're, they're paraplegics because of BMX or they're, uh, that <laughs> really, right, we won't. Bad. yeah, right, we won't. But, but, again, but this goes back to what we were talking about before. It's like, people always ask these guys like, okay, you just broke your femur. And the first thing you're asking the doctor is when can I get back on my bike? 
Right. People are like, why, you know, to, to, to mm. explain that to somebody, they want to know, why would you want to do, get back on the thing that just broke you? Yeah. And it's, it's that passion. When you have that passion and that's what drives you, it's, it doesn't matter. You just want to get back on. It doesn't matter how long it's going to take you, but you're going to do it. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. Everybody says that. I mean, you're right. It would, no matter what sport it is. I mean, snowboarders, same thing. Worst wipe out of their lives. It's like, how long am I out? That's the first question. Right. Uh, yeah. Too, too funny. My wife yeah. yelled at me because I was riding my four wheeler with a cast on. She's like, you're broken. Why are you? I was like, I can work it. It's thumb throttle. It's okay. I'm good. You can go. Uh, well, you didn't, yeah. you didn't break you, it right? long you out, ride. did you? Uh, yeah, I flipped it and I went. And it was per- it was crazy. I, I cut the corner. I cheat. I tried to cheat. Cut the corner of the track, and there was a log on an angle, and I hit it. My four wheel barrel rolled. I landed right on my butt, which would have been fine, but I like karate chopped a rock that was sticking up out of the ground and oh, broke what? the bone, uh, that last bone on my hand. Uh, and I knew it right too. Away? It just crunched. It didn't. Hurt. Oh yeah, it didn't hurt, but I just knew because my hand was deformed. So I had to ride home. We were like two miles in the woods. I rode home with my left hand throttling it. Went to get it fixed. Uh-huh. Uh, they put a cast on it. And the next day I was riding and she was screaming at me. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> right on. Uh, yeah, I, Mark, I we, got, you guys. we got like a, a minute before the right. break. A, a full minute. What? Uh, right. Any little shout quick. outs? Any little any little things you want to throw out? Yes. I've, I've heard enough from the chat and from people talking today. I will start a meet up i'm going to put out feelers tomorrow next week i will have information for you and a time i'm going to say right now we'll do it in rockland county new york and we'll do it on a saturday that way okay. we don't have to leave work and it's pretty central to most people i'll do a uh, a I'll trailer I'm put I'll, out I'll, feelers. I'll do a promo for it if you can send me the stuff you know i'm going to be gone um i'm leaving friday coming back sunday for that atlanta flat earth thing but I'll depend when you get when okay. you want to do it. I'll absolutely. And by the way, all the people that are out there, I know we're coming down to the break here real quick. Think about doing a flatter thing for the eclipse for August 21st. Think about nice. doing a flatter thing for it. Got to do it live. Everybody's yeah. got to be live. Everybody should be streaming the hell out of that thing. Anyway, um, say your yeah. say your goodbyes because we're gonna be going to music here in a second. Happy birthday, Lasagna. That's my man. He, I, I was so happy that he got the call yesterday. Uh, that's awesome. Love you that's guys. That's awesome. Take it easy, right. Zach. You're the man. And keep it up. Keep it up. All right. Bye, guys. We're coming, back in, we're coming back in three minutes for the last segment, okay? Ooh. Hang on, Zach. Gotcha. This is Truth Frequency Radio. No hate. No hype. No fear. Real people. Real radio. Welcome back to Strange World, part four of four. Yes, that was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album Night and Day. And why do I choose that song? Quick reminder to anyone who's out there. It's because it's one of the first MTV videos I ever saw and what made me fall in love with MTV. And if you guys haven't checked it out, look it up. Joe Jackson stepping out on YouTube. You can find it. It's pretty cool. 1907 that video came out. 1907? I'm just kidding. I love <laughs> whenever I just dates about like uh, anything. I would just like to lie about the dates. I just make go just go way back. Uh, back oh. in back in 19. Uh, they didn't even say 1907. It was 1907. Back I, when the I, I, my go-to is 1977. When like I'm in a, a different country and I pretend that like I know what's going on. I'm like, oh yeah, this cathedral it was created 1977. Awesome. That's good. Yeah, 1977. I'm, I'm a big stat nut and a big uh, factoid nut. 1977 was a fun year for me. That was the year that Jeff Bridges did one of the first King Kong remakes. When okay. when when King Kong was on the Twin Towers and jumped from one to the other. Okay, okay. I haven't seen that. I know. It, it dates me. Anyway, uh, let's see here. Oh, I'm sorry. Quote of the day. Uh, let's see. 
two quotes, and they're both directed towards you. It's from the peanut gallery. First one is from Albert Einstein. Life is like riding a bicycle. In order to keep your balance, you must keep moving. And the second one is from Mark Twain. Get a bicycle. You will certainly not regret it if you live. I love that one. <laughs> it's nice. All right. The phone calls apparently are stacking up. Let's grab the first one. It's going to be, I believe, from Michigan. Five. Wow, that text is smaller. I need glasses or both. Five, eight, <laughs> five eight six area code. Warren, Mich- Michigan, are you there? We're calling from 1907. Calling, you're in the future. <laughs> yeah. what's, uh, what's up? Mark, what's going on? Can you hear me? Can you hear I can't, me? I can't hear you. Yeah, this is Charlie from Michigan, Ann Arbor. I called uh, on your hundredth show, and this is my second time calling into the radio station. <laughs> um, I was I was listening to you and on um, um, the Hot Potato Show. I, I'm right. sorry, I forget the name. But with Patricia. Rebecca Steer yeah. and or Patricia. Sh- here and um did i hear correctly that there's gonna be a flat earth meetup in battle creek michigan yes as a matter of fact they're gonna have bowling and i should have the information in front of me and let's see if i ask her hopefully she's listening but yes um you can email tell you what you want all the information for this because in fact uh patricia steers patricia steers is going to be attending this one personally and yeah, I know. I'm excited go, about that. Just type in uh, this email address. Ready? It's Miss M I S S S T E E S T E E R E at uh, yahoo.com. I think. Hang on. Let me, let me make sure of that. Sorry. Miss Miss Steer at yahoo.com. Yeah. Yeah. M I S S S T E E R E. I'm sorry. At gmail.com. Gmail.com. At gmail.com. All yeah, right, just I just email her. Will. She'll give you all the details. I don't have all the specifics in front of me. All I know is there's going to be a meetup there, and from what I understand, there's going to be bowling. Okay, that sounds all right. like a good time. Cool. So I have one more question for you. Um, sure, what do you got? I think it was your last show. A uh-huh. caller called in, and he was talking about a show that um, – uh, oh God, I can't think of his name. Uh, Rob right. Kiba did, and yeah. they were trying. Uh, they're try. They're trying to figure out where the moon was. And right, I think and they it were... was a show they did on on Truth on on uh, Truth Frequency Radio. Do you right. know what show that was? I think it was on the nineteenth, but I was looking for it and I couldn't find it. Uh, the night? No, I think it was the one after that. I think it was just the last one. Um, you can also look this up online. Um, email me uh, and, and remind me about it if you can't find it, because I listened to it myself. Okay. He actually, po- he actually, somebody posted a snippet of that on YouTube, and what they did was they took a special app for the phone, and this is for uh, mm-hmm. Zach because I don't, he probably didn't catch up on this, which is they they both shot the, they used this app on their phone. They both shot the moon from the same time at the same time on the same night from different cities, and the app will give sure. you a distance. The, the app will give you a distance based on the triangulation of exactly where that object is. And what was weird was both phones said that the moon was only 300 miles up. Really? <laughs> uh, that's awesome. That's, yeah. That's and amazing. Rob was, and didn't, they did it like more than once, right? Yeah. And they did, yeah, it, they like did it multiple, they did it multiple times and well, Rob was freaking yeah. out. So, uh, that yeah. Is so, that is so cool, man. Yeah. But if you can't find, um, let me know. Yeah. Go to go to go go to Rob Skiba's channel on YouTube first because I think it's on there. And uh, okay. if, if if you can't find it, it's got to be within the. It's either the last weeks or the one before that on YouTube. And unfortunately, that's all I, I got for you. I can do it with you because the the calls are backing up to the point where I I actually can't see how far down they go. So uh, hey, yeah, I'll let you, I'll let you go. Let me just give one shout out to. Uh, my roommate Doug, he's my best friend. So, right on. Uh, shout out to Doug from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Right on, Doug. You got a friend out there. He's a flat earther, <laughs> so be so be careful. All right, man. You have a good night. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Let's grab Minnesota. A six one two area code, Minnesota. Are you there? Are you prepped? Are you there? Are you prepped? Minnesota. 
And I can I can oh. hear my echo in the background. Minnesota, you got five seconds, and then I got to go to the next caller. Five, four. Hello. <laughs> All right. Hello. Hey, Minnesota, are you there? Yes, this is Wes. What's up? Oh Lord, it's Wes. Yeah. Wes from Wes from Flat Earth News. See, Wes normally broadcasts from the uh, prison canteen at the local county jail. Oh, gotcha. That's actually not go. true. We, we think he's in jail. We actually don't know where he is. And he's probably one of the worst videographers ever in the history. Literally, he, can, he has a natural ability to create a Blair Witch movie without even trying. He could literally just be going for coffee and, and it'll turn into a Blair Witch movie. Maybe you see a doctor about that. That's right. <laughs> I got. I got to keep it. Keep it fresh. You know what I mean. Oh my lord. Anyway, what do you what do you got, Wes? Because I got a stack of people behind you. Oh no no no! I was I was actually I didn't even hear you. Uh, the thing say usually it says mute unmute or whatever. I didn't even hear it because mm-hmm. I was all set up for something and now I blow it. I That's blew because it. you were counting your uh, cigarettes to in a just... trade and counting. Yeah, that's probably what it was. <laughs> okay, Zulu. Zulu one. We yeah, are Zulu. big and fluffy. That's what he has to say. Uh, no, I never did. Uh, uh, Zach, by the way, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you uh, as well. Listening to the show. Um, I wasn't into BMX when I was younger, but I was into motorcycles. And I remember when you were when you were talking about accidents and whatnot and what the worst thing was, I, I just happened to remember when I was 13 getting a uh, 125 OSA made by Hodaka. Most people don't know what the hell that is, yeah. but uh, yeah. everything on it's kind of like backwards. The shifter's on the other side of the... The, the, the shifter and the, the rear brake is reversed. Wow. Yeah, same thing with the chain and everything. But anyhow, this thing didn't have any uh, back... Uh, passenger pegs, so I put in these giant massive bolts, and I'm doing some stupid shit, as you do when you're 13. Right. Did a little jump, came down, my left peg busted off, hit the ground, flung my foot up back into that bolt, and went into <laughs> where the ankle is, and went right down to the bone, freaking wow. out. Means nothing, but it, it was just one of them weird accidents. Stupid accidents from a 13-year-old. Wow. It happens. All right, man. Hey, um, all right. Yeah, you, know, you know, I love you. I do, but you got to get back in your cell and I got to, I got to grab the next caller. There you go. All right. Later. <laughs> See you, man. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's grab, geez. I, I have no idea who to pick from here. Uh, let's pick, uh, this looks like North Carolina could be a female. Uh, are you there? Mystery person. Oh yeah. You know who I am. Oh boy, mom! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not mom. Although her it's name is Candy, her, her, her name is Candy. So if anybody has moms out there that are named Candy, this could be your mom. I ain't okay, but let me tell you something. You say mom. I'm over here drinking, and you know I don't drink. Like I, my son turns 18 in exactly 20 minutes, and this is the most bittersweet feeling I've ever had. I had to call just to have a counseling session. I'm just kidding, but really, it, do you do you want to do you want to like, say I'm, hi? Do you want to say hi to the guest, Candy? Yeah, dude, I saw your picture. That is like I said. Uh, I was opening actually opening a pair of um, World Industries pair of shoes, and I was like, I don't even know what this. Is. And Karen B was at my house, and she's like, that is dater shit. <laughs> And then I was like, okay, well, Mark Sargent has a skater dude on his uh, show tonight. Some not, BMX not a skater guy, dude. So. Not a skater dude. <laughs> kind it's of. A, it's, it's, well, kind of a skater dude, but it's, but it's BMX. Well, you know, X Games type of guy. You know, danger, death at every turn. Those type of guys. What radio? Candy. So, so I just mean, hey, candy. yeah. Seriously. <laughs> <Seriously. laughs> I wanted to tell you, like, I'm, uh, I had that flat earth party and some of my neighbors came over. Well, I'm sitting over here all, with all of them listening to you guys. So I just wanted right to let on. you know that. All right. Shout well, out to, shout out. out to my friends. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Zach says hi to everybody. Wait. Okay. Yeah. I heard his name was Zach, but does he have a um, channel? Because I wasn't listening to the, here, take both. 
Yes, you I know, Zach, Zach, pl- Zach, plug your channel so Candy can say all sorts of nice things on it. Uh, my, uh, my YouTube channel is uh, Catfish Catfish, one word. Okay, so you know, okay. you, you know why Mark's saying that? Because I am Mark's bodyguard in his comment section. Oh, Before Lord. I had my, literally that was my job position. I was Mark Sargent and ODD's bodyguard in their comment section. That's why he's saying that. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> No, no, no. But uh, no, seriously. All right. Anyway, um, so here I'll, I'll 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 spell out his name real quick so you can look him up. Look him up on IMDb and go all over the place. Ready? It's Zach Z A C K Yankush or Yankush or however you want to pronounce it. Y A N K U S H. Okay. Just send me the link. I just really wait, wanted wait, to. Is it that on. hard? Seriously, is it that hard? You want me to send you the link? You're killing me. <laughs> oh, sitting on not the floor. party with Candy. I'm scared to party with Candy, and she's going to be showing up at the conference. Oh, hey, hey, hey! You will have so much fun with Candy that night. Watch what I tell you. <laughs> I are really are you going to talk talk about yourself in the third person? Well, sometimes they do that because sometimes I have to step outside inside the All box. Right. But no, I, seriously. I gotta, oh uh, Candy, I gotta go. I gotta go. I got thir- I got fourteen minutes and I gotta see if I can nail out the rest of these calls, okay? Candy? Did she she, she hung up she hung up. Unbelievable. Oh, hell right, no. Hell no. We're picking up Tacoma, Washington. Tacoma, Washington, two, five, three. What's going on? Mark Sargent is Daryl D. Marble. How you doing? Hey, it's D Marble. Right on. The guy that the guy that brought the spirit level on the plane and made national news. Oh hell yeah, <laughs> dude. Damn, it is nice to meet you, man. <laughs> hey, nice to meet you, man. Hey, hey, very inspirational story. I was listening in earlier, had to drop out to uh make a video real quick. Uh yeah. proud to announce, happy to announce, we have a flat earth meetup in Seattle next Tuesday. You do not. Yes, sir. We're gonna be at the Pyramid Brewery. Uh Across the street from uh, Safeco Field. What time? Seven o'clock, man. Dude, <laughs> really? You're gonna have it the are, same. Are you night gonna... as my, you're gonna do it the same. You realize it's a Tuesday now. You're gonna do it the same night as my show. Yeah. Ah, crap! You're ah. Oh, <laughs> I didn't book. I, I wasn't the one that booked it, man. No, I didn't book it. Okay. <laughs> no, no worries. There, no, actually, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter that much anyway because uh, the I was planning on doing another Seattle meetup. You know, H, the HBO guys wanted to do a meetup in Seattle and so I was going to do one anyway. I may have to miss that one though yeah. because I'm com- coming back from the Atlanta thing. I don't know. We'll we'll see. But you're you're going to be there, I imagine. Absolutely. Right on. Right on. And oh, by the way, Absolutely. we have to we have to meet up for the eclipse thing potentially. I just found out if you didn't already hear at the beginning of the show that I am going to be down there. I don't know if I'm going to be in was it Salem or Eugene? <clears throat> But I, because mm-hmm. the documentary team is going to, uh, we're we're starting in Portland. But I get a feeling if they know that the billboard's down there, the flat Earth billboard, that I may. Anyway, we'll 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 be in touch before then. So, sweet, yeah, excellent, excellent. Yeah, I just wanted to call in, and let you know. Hey, we're gonna be meeting up over there. Uh, a friend of mine booked it. I've already posted a video, put it on my Facebook and a few groups and all that. Pretty excited about this one. Oh, I may have to but, go. Yeah. I may have to postpone the show next week and uh, and do it if you guys are actually going to do that. So That's okay. I can I can put it on rerun. It's not a huge deal. So I probably shouldn't say Fantastic. that. Fantastic. So. Yeah, of course. they. Uh, look, everybody would love to have the father of Flat Earth. Oh, don't, it, don't you know? start up with that. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> I want to have Matt Boylan make like two or three more videos. Now, he still hasn't figured this out. Yet. That name's out there. He's, uh, he's too distracted with other things. When he figures that out, he is going to flip. He's going to lose it. Dude, I keep, I keep, uh, man, I keep hearing you just uh, kind of like, guys, cut that out. <laughs> Why well, I had to mess with you about that one. Uh, <laughs> I did, and I never said that to the Denver Post. I never did. Anyway, uh, I know. Any shout, any shout outs? I'm still. I think I can get rid of the last callers. Um, any shout outs you want to give? <clears throat> oh, no, I, I got nothing. Just shout out to the Flair community. Um, shout out to my man, uh, the BMX player on the line, man. Uh, you, you, love man. the story, man. I'm gonna go back and listen to that again tomorrow, dude. Just the way that uh, you know, everything worked out for you. That's awesome. Chasing your dreams. That's just beautiful, dude. Are, but yeah. Hey, Daryl, are oh, you? Yeah, you guys have a good night. Wait, are you wait, Daryl, before you go, are did are you gonna do a promo yeah. as well for the Seattle mixer meetup? Oh yeah, it, it, it's already on YouTube, sir. 
Oh, all right. Oh, yep. now I have to. All, all right. right. All right. Cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will talk to you soon. Then. All right. All right. Bye bye. Cool. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Bye. Okay. Who can we grab? Uh, let's grab Colorado potentially. We'll see. Uh, Glenwood Springs, maybe. Glenwood Springs, are you there? Glenwood Springs. No kidding, Mark. Yeah, you you actually may be. Well, hey. you're not the last call tonight, but you're getting close. What's up? Wow. Hey, I'm just loving the show. I've uh, I've picked you up the last couple weeks, and I've gone through uh, a lot of the archives, and I'm I'm really really loving it. Right on. Are when, when? How long have you been into the whole flat Earth thing? Or are you not into it fully yet? Oh no, I, I'm I'm there. I'm I'm like, you know, <clears throat> probably about ninety eight percent. And it started. Actually, I think you did a uh, interview with George Nori. Oh right, back in uh, May of twenty fifteen. Uh, yeah. A couple years ago, maybe. Yep. And that 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 seed's growing. It's really really uh, blossoming now. Right on. Yeah, yeah, it is. And uh, again, I'm just humbled to be a part of it. It's it's way different than I, I'd have so ever doing, imagined. You're doing it. awesome work, my friend. Well, thank you. It's That's awesome. it's just so crazy it's the, the, the way that uh, I don't know. It's consumed me, and <laughs> you know, you go through these waves of emotion where you're. Oh, like, I know. At first, you're sad and like, what the hell is this? And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, okay, I'm all right. You know. Uh, it's a, I, I still get it those days. I get down days and I get up days and I get days where I'm super energetic and other days it's like, oh, you know, it's, it's something, it, what, what's, what are the powers that be? What's NASA going to do now that try to throw a wrench in things or what's the mainstream media going to do? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to try to get right. one more call and then uh, plug the hell out Go of whatever Zach it. wants to plug. So, hey, thank you for calling in and thank you for sticking with me. And I don't know if I'm going to do a live show next week. If there's a meetup, I probably not. But uh, I heard that. So uh, yeah, do the do the meetup. I'll be bummed that uh, you won't have the show. But it's uh, good to meet people face to face. Exactly. I probably should do this. So anyway, man, you have a good night. Okay. Thanks, Mark. See All you, right. buddy. Bye bye. Okay, last call of the evening, and then we're gonna plug Zach until he doesn't want to be plugged anymore. <laughs> that, that isn't fr- that isn't phrasing. Uh oh boy, there's two calls. Who do I pick? Uh, you know what, Zach, you pick. You gonna pick Maryland or Texas? We'll go Maryland. Maryland. Here we go. Four four three area code Maryland. You may or may not be the last wow. call tonight. What's yeah. going on? I I I have been on here for about thirty minutes, but I appreciate you taking me. You wait, made did, in Maryland. You, wait, did I did I already talk to you? No, he's no, been on. No, no, no. Really? You, you were just talked to me. You were just but, on hold for thirty minutes? No, I I've been on I've been on the hold line or whatever you have going on <laughs> for thirty plus minutes. Oh well, then it's it's good we it's good we picked you up. Otherwise, you would probably have been so ticked off. I've been like, getting I've been getting the yeah I've been getting the live cast instead of the uh, delay cast. Oh, I got you. Thirty oh. plus minutes. Welcome to the party. But, hey, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> what's uh Absolutely. what what do you what do you got Wait, all, what's on your mind fact, did you forget it by now huh did you forget what the question was your comments were by now oh, well i had so many but <laughs> by now i mean shit i just want to hey i i respect uh the frat dude that came on there earlier that was that was pretty cool all right <laughs> i mean that's the that's the next generation of flat yeah. earth I'm I'm glad he did not have ten of his friends and, with him. That never turns and out well. For your guest, for, yeah. for your guest, uh, dude, you're you're brave as shit. Like I cannot go launching off obstacles on a bike, or <laughs> anything. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I appreciate. Uh, I mean, but that's that's the next millennium of flat Earth, and this is what I wanted to talk to you about. Okay. I've recently kind of took a hit with the whole flat earth thing. Not like my belief in it, but everything is working against flat earth right now. Right. I mean, you have such divide like True. everywhere. 
True. Had political divide, racial divide. That's and true. You know the one thing that I've noticed that brings flat earth is that if you believe in flat earth, none of that matters. <laughs> like political, it's true. Racial, none of that. None of that matters. If you, like, and that's what Abs- I love about it. Not Absolute. only that it's, I believe it's true, but yeah. it's, it's so compelling. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 tell me your comments. I'm sorry. Go I don't ahead. know. You're absolutely right. Uh, not only is flat earth a fear killer, but true flat earth is also a discrimination killer. You should, if you really believe yeah. in flat earth, you shouldn't be picking on any groups. And you know me and my hatred towards the, the Eskimos and the Sherpas of the Himalayas. But other than them, I think that for the most part, you have no reason to hate any demographic group. Again, except for the Eskimos and the Sherpas. Exactly. So, that's why, that's why I'm, but I have become discouraged recently because it's, it's not going to get news. There's, there's no oh. chance in hell. Don't be so sure, man. Republican news. Okay, Don't well, be... I'm talking about mainstream news. I'm not talking about YouTube. I know that there's a large movement, but I'm talking about like mainstream, man. There's no chance in hell. Have have you news. have you missed what the last two weeks? What have you been doing? You realize we made the front page of. Well, what uh, is this? When, once once we made the front page of the well, Denver Post, other newspapers picked it up. I got I did a CNN interview from a parking lot. Two weeks I know, ago. I know, but yeah, okay. Look, give I, it, give it, I'm, give I'm it a hoping. little. It takes a little bit to to get it over the edge, but once it gets over the hump, man, don't don't sell it short. Yeah, but you know, it's not going to get over the hump with the next four years. I mean, well, there's so much. I disagree. Trash. There's, I think, there's a huge potential okay. for it. No. Well, I believe that we will. There's, there's always going to be people catching on. I mean, nine months ago, you wouldn't have been seeing me caught near a flat earth. Theory, well, but, see, there you go. You know, and and I'm you would have like, doubted it. You would have doubted it then. Hey, do do this for me. Can you I know. G- give me give me your main point in like thirty seconds? Because then I gotta I gotta do my thing with Zach, and then the show ends. So what do you got? Quick, quick, quick. Okay. All right. My main my main point is that people need to stick it to stick up for this. All right. right. This is bigger than a lot of things going on in the media. And my fear is that it's just going to get brushed under the rug. And then eventually, maybe like four years later, it'll it'll resurface. But we need to keep this going. I agree. Doubt it not. Have faith, man. And unfortunately, I got to send you off into the night. But I appreciate your concern and trust me. I got no problem with that. Thank you. And, uh, Thank you, BMX dude. I'm sorry, I can't remember. It's okay. Your name I'm Angelo. But you're you're a cool dude from 1977. You, I appreciate it. Thank you. All cool right, man. Dude. You have a good night. All right. I did. I had unfortunately cut him off just the last second there. Okay, Zach. Yes. Plug. What do you, what What's out there? What do you want people to go to first if they want to know more about you? Go. Um, my Instagram is pretty well. Obviously, my YouTube channel, but I don't really focus on that too much because I'm actually so busy, but. Um, you can go check out my Instagram page. You can see uh, see my worldly travels. See where all of, I'm all over the place. What's your Instagram? Is uh, Catfish vs Thug. Catfish versus Thug. Nice. And then uh, all my other social media is Catfish Catfish. Uh, I know there's a lot of guys on Snapchat out there, and, um, and kind of like we talked about before, that's how we got introduced is via Snapchat. But that's probably my favorite form of. Uh, social media because it's direct interaction with uh with people and uh my snapchat and twitter is catfish catfish right on cool any uh any other things unfortunately texas i'm not gonna be able to pick you up tonight the show is winding down here in just a few seconds um thank you very much zach the guest tonight guys in case you guys missed it was zach yankush z-a-c-k-y-a-n-k-u-s-h otherwise known as catfish and you can you look go. him up all over the place he'll be tied to some fun things and he's also a flat earther so give him some love and i'm sure we'll talk to you again sometime all right man thanks for the opportunity shout out to all the flat earthers out there all right hey see you guys same flat time same flat channel come on back now see on for a second there zach gotcha Is that a model of the flat, geocentric Earth?
<laughs> I had to make a new one. What are you doing? Thank you.